industries and households for many years to come, and I commend the bill to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Annette King. Mr. Speaker, I rise to speak to the Local Government Act 2002 Amendment Bill. This bill is a disgrace to this Parliament. It is nothing more than a gratuitous attack on local government and has been inspired by a sacked minister, Nick Smith, who based his so-called reforms on a lot of lies, misinformation and a handful of egregious examples to denigrate local government and, Mr Speaker, to prove a political point. And the political point was he didn't like the 2002 Act because the Labor Party had passed it. This bill, I have to say, Mr Speaker, was opposed by the majority of submitters who came to the Select Committee. One after another, they lined up to oppose the change of the purpose of the Local Government Act. Local government themselves, NGOs, Grey Power, Law Society, individuals, many others, lined up to oppose the change that this bill is making to the purpose of local government. And I have to say, Mr Speaker, none of their submissions will be listened to. And I see Colin King looking at me. And Colin King comes from rural provincial New Zealand. And I say to Colin King, the mayors and the local authority people in the rural provincial New Zealand are disgusted at what this government is doing to local government. Many of them who have worked hard in their local communities, who provide services that those communities want, and for very little reason they are being told they have to change the purpose and what they are doing. We strongly oppose this bill. And I have already tabled two supplementary order papers. And I thank my colleague Charles Chevelle, who, when I asked, immediately had them written and I had them tabled so we can show this government that we will not support these changes that are not based on facts, not based on evidence, but based on a whole lot of myths and a story that has been spun by Nick Smith. And those two SOPs, Mr Speaker, is to restore the four well-beings back to the purpose of the Local Government Act, the four well-beings of social, environmental, economic and cultural, which have been in the Act since 2002, and I will talk more about that in a moment. The second supplementary order paper will be to restore the uh, requirement of a poll of electors in an effective affected the area to be held when the Local Government Commission decides on a final proposal for local government reorganisation. The foundation stone of democracy that you allow local people to have a local say, Mr Speaker. We, um, we oppose this bill on six major grounds. The first is there is absolutely no evidence, no evidence provided by the government that, that we need to change the purpose of the Local Government Act. There was no evidence provided that we should get rid of the four well-beings. And let me tell the member who knows nothing about this bill, otherwise he wouldn't, otherwise he wouldn't be chirping. I say to him, go and read the regulatory impact statement from your own government department who wrote on this bill, and I'll read it, there is no clear quantitative evidence to suggest the Local Government Act 2002 has resulted in a proliferation of new activities or that local government is undertaking a wider group of functions. The very reason Nick Smith gave for changing the purpose was that local government had got way outside its scope and they were providing services they ought not. There is no quantitative evidence and that comes from the minister's own department. I had a survey of local government around New Zealand and asked them what had they added to their core services since the passage of the 2002 Act. One council one council re replied that they might be doing one thing that might not be considered a core service by local government. There is no evidence to change the purpose. And if a government 
ever listens to submissions, if they even take the slightest bit of notice of submissions, over, well, always listening, well, I will look to see if the member for Tauranga votes with this side of the House on leave, putting back the four world beings because the member from Tauranga needs to know that nearly every submission to the select committee said leave the world, four world beings alone. And Local Government New Zealand itself at its conference in Queenstown this year voted unanimously to leave the purpose of the Local Government Act alone. And will the government listen? Mr King, have you had any influence on your, the government? Have the rural members had any influence over this government? I, I predict not, not a dicky bird. They will not change a thing when it comes to the purpose of this Act. The second thing, Mr Speaker, is it has been based on misinformation and it has been based on a very small number of egregious examples as to why we should change local government. And some of those examples were around the debt and the costs of local government. And it was we've been provided with information as recently as October 2012 from, a, from research that was done by the New Zealand Institute of Economic Research entitled, Is Local Government Fiscally Responsible? And that report states that the data from the last 10 to 20 years suggests that the local government sector as a whole has not been fiscally irresponsible. Rates and spending have risen, but the increases are not startling relative to GDP or property values. At an aggregate level, investment and borrowing cannot be said to have been irresponsibly high. Debt levels, debt is low relative to assets. Capital spending is steady relative to the asset base. Debt servicing costs are at a responsible level. Now, that's not the opposition saying that. That's not local government saying that. That comes from work comprehensive work done by the New Zealand Institute of Economic Research. That blows out of the water this argument that local government has been fiscally irresponsible and that they need to be reined in. The third reason, Mr Speaker, is this bill has been rushed. It was written before there was sufficient evidence gathered to support the changes. And that is in the regulatory impact statement from the Department of Internal Affairs. They said there is a risk as to whether the proposals will even work. They said there would be significant sector reaction, that the time frame in which the proposals have been developed has restricted the ability to assess multiple options, and the assumptions have not or only been partially tested. That's what this bill is based on, partially tested or untested assumptions. It has not been properly thought through. It is based, it is based yeah. Mr Speaker, on the idea of Nick Smith, who wants to punish local government. The fourth reason, Mr Speaker, is the whole bill has been done back to front. It's an eight-point plan from the national government called Better Local Government. The first four parts of their, their programme is in, is in legislation. The last four parts of their programme is, is to do research, to, to have task force, to look at what changes needed to be made in local government. So we put the legislation in first and then we find out what we really need to do. I've never seen a more back to front way of undertaking legislation. The fifth reason, Mr Speaker, is that they are anti-democratic changes. It's being made in terms of the removal of the ability for, for local people to have a local say and whether they will be amalgamated with another bigger local authority. We are opposed to weakening local decision-making by local people, and many, many submissions were also strongly opposed. And finally, Mr Speaker, oh, we believe that this this bill leads to far greater interference in local government by the Minister than is warranted by the evidence. We only have two forms of government in this country, central government 
and local government. We aren't bound up with many houses and many different um, forms of government. It's very simple in New Zealand. We are not over-governed, and we re rely on local government to do the job at a local level. They do a good job by any measure, and this interference is unwanted, unwarranted. Mr Speaker, we will strongly oppose this bill, and we will be joined by thousands of New Zealanders who agree with us. I call Jackie Dean. Yes, thank you, Mr Speaker. The member who has just resumed her seat is very uh, concerned about what the local government said.